Hello beautiful friends and bookish fam. My name is Brittany. This is Rescues and Reads. Thank you so much for joining me here today for another book miss video. Today we are here to do my mid-month December wrap-up. So I'm hoping that today's wrap-up is not going to take too terribly long. I only have five books to talk to you about today and that is because the book that I'm currently reading right now is a very long one and it's taking me quite a long time to get through especially since I'm not enjoying it very much. Of course I will talk more about that book in my final December wrap-up but essentially I've only been reading that book for the past like four or five days and so that's why I have only five books instead of probably like seven or eight to talk to you about. And so without further ado we will go ahead and just jump right into the wrap-up. The first book that I read in the month of December was The Friend Zone by Abby Jimenez. Now y'all know that I discovered Abby Jimenez this year. I read her two newest releases, Part of Your World and Yours Truly, and I absolutely loved them both. This is one of her backlist novels. It is the first in a series of companion romance novels, and I was a little bit nervous going in because I had heard some really negative things about this. So I'm going to say here that there will be spoilers in this review after I'm done giving a synopsis of what the story is about. So if you are not interested in hearing any spoilers at all, please feel free to jump to the timestamp that I will try to remember to leave on the screen here for you. And I'm including spoilers because I don't feel like I can adequately express my thoughts and feelings on the story without them and I also feel like it will kind of address some of the main points of contention with the story. So this follows our two main characters Kristen and Josh and they are meeting each other because their two best friends are getting married and they are both going to be in the wedding party and when they first meet they don't really hit it off right away but they soon become close friends when Josh starts working part-time for Kristen's online retail company catering to small dogs and as this happens they start to get closer and Josh really likes Kristen. He's really attracted to her. There's a lot of chemistry between them for sure. He definitely starts developing feelings for her but Kristen at the time is actually in a long distance relationship with her military boyfriend. But once things kind of implode in that relationship she is able to kind of act on the attraction she is also feeling for Josh. However Kristen is not willing to let this be anything more than a friends with benefits situation and that is because she knows that Josh wants a huge family. He wants a baseball team of children. He has said so multiple times and Kristen knows that she is never going to be able to give that to him because she has a condition. I don't know what the name of it is off the top of my head but it is a condition with her uterus like her uterus is filled with fibroids and I believe there's some ulcers and basically it really affects her quality of life because every single time she has her period it's essentially debilitating pain it lasts for three weeks it's heavy and she's actually opted to have a hysterectomy to kind of take care of this because she's been dealing with it as long as she has had periods essentially and so she knows she's never going to be able to give Josh the children that he wants and so she's not willing to let it go any further and this confuses Josh because of course Kristen is not talking to him about any of her reasonings behind this which is definitely frustrating you wonder why Kristen is not just coming clean and it's basically because she doesn't want to give Josh an opportunity to reject her. So she's basically keeping him at arm's length. But then once Josh actually finds out what is going on with her, he wants to be with her despite that and she still won't let him. She's still making the decision for him because she feels like Josh is going to resent her one day for this. And so it is all about them trying to overcome these obstacles. Now here's where I get into the spoiler parts of my review. I just had a feeling as I was reading this that this book was going to wind up with Kristen pregnant. I just had the sense that it was going to. Lo and behold, we're near the end of the story and she is magically pregnant and not only is she pregnant but she is pregnant after the one and only time she and Josh had unprotected sex and so naturally that gave me the biggest eye roll of life because here's a woman who in her own words has been playing baby roulette for the past eight years as long as she's been sexually active never wearing a condom or anything like that because she pretty much knew she was never going to have biological children she's never had a pregnancy scare and all of a sudden bam she's pregnant by Josh's magic sperm so that was a huge eye roll for me I hate when books end with women pregnant no matter what the storyline is just because I really feel like we need to normalize women being happy without children but I was especially frustrated by this because we had been told the entirety of this book that she was never going to have biological children and that was the whole basis of her pushing Josh away and even though I cannot personally empathize or understand the infertility struggle I did kind of feel like that was a slap in the face to all of the women who are actually suffering from serious infertility who cannot have children so that right there was going to take this book from like a 4.5 to almost a 3 3.5 instantaneously because I I hated that. Luckily that was not the ending ending because in the epilogue of the story you kind of find out that Kristen ultimately went ahead with a hysterectomy. Her quality of life was still deteriorating because of her condition. They had tried to have more children and they were not successful and they just kind of had to accept that they had a miracle baby and that was going to be it. So I appreciate that they did not have this miracle solution where now all of a sudden Kristen was able to give Josh the baseball team of children that he wanted, right? That they ended it on a more realistic note. So that kind of helped me a little bit but what also helped me immensely was the author's note. Abby 
Jimenez clearly states in her author's note that this book and Kristen's character was almost entirely based on the real life experiences of her best friend. And if you don't mind, I actually want to read a bit of this author's note. Kristen's character is based on my best friend Lindsay and her struggle with infertility. I talk about it now with her full permission the same way I wrote about it. Lindsay had a full hysterectomy at the age of just 29 after dealing with debilitating reproductive issues for years. While she was able to conceive her two children naturally and much like Kristen without medical intervention and to her complete surprise, she dealt with secondary infertility due to severe uterine fibroids. She had all if not more of the physical and emotional challenges Kristen experiences in the novel. Much of what I wrote was verbatim as Lindsay described it to me. And so after reading this, knowing that Kristen's experiences were almost completely based around the real life experiences of a real person made me feel like what Kristen went through was actually very realistic and that her unplanned unexpected pregnancy was actually not completely out of left field, that it was not impossible, that it was more realistic. And so ultimately the way that it fully ended and the author's note, maybe not as disgruntled with Kristen's unexpected pregnancy near the ending of the story. I do wish that ultimately Abby Jimenez had decided to stay on the planned trajectory of Kristen having the hysterectomy. I do think that that would have been more acceptable to a lot of the readers that read this story, but I'm not as disgruntled by the ending as I was after having read the author's note. And so I just want people to keep that in mind. But ultimately my overall reading experience of this was very, very positive. I think Abby Jimenez is such a premier romance author. She writes almost perfect romances in my opinion, and she does certain things so very well. She writes wonderful love interests, especially male love interests. She does chemistry and banter extremely well. Like the chemistry between these two was palpable and she does harder hitting elements so well. Like every single time I'm reading the books, I am feeling the emotions in there. I'm feeling what the characters are feeling. And I just love that. I think it takes a very special author to be able to do that. And Abby Jimenez does it. So I'm giving this a solid four stars. I love Kristen and Josh. I love them together. I loved the things that they went through. And ultimately I just really adored this overall. It was still a very strong reading experience and I am going to recommend. Next, I picked up What Have We Done by Alex Finley and I'm going to be honest and say that I don't have much to say about this and that's primarily because I don't remember a lot about what happened in this. This book felt to me like a book that was originally written to be adapted for the screen but instead they adapted it into a book. Like I feel like this is a book that would be much better had you watched it on the big screen rather than putting it into a book because there was a lot of really kind of ridiculous over-the-top things that happened in here. Ultimately, it surrounds a group of people who have one thing in common. When they were younger, pretty much in their early to mid teens, they were all at this one particular foster house. And now as adults, somebody is trying to kill them because something happened when they were foster kids that they have kept secret for many, many years. And I believe if I'm correct, there were five or six of them in total. One of them is already dead and the rest are targeted. And so this book is told from three of their perspectives and their perspectives are very unrelatable and wild. One of them, the female, was actually recruited from this foster home to be an assassin. And so she was an assassin for many years up until she decided to become a stay at home soccer mom, essentially. And then one of them is actually a former rock star who's kind of washed up and is drug addicted. Now there is a duo of twin assassin girls who are after these people. And it was just wild. It was really over the top and ridiculous. It was definitely entertaining. Like this book will keep you entertained and it will keep the pages turning, especially because you kind of want to figure out what's happening, what's going on. But at the end of the day, because it was so plot based and plot driven, I honestly remember like almost nothing that happened in here. I wasn't connected emotionally in any way, shape or form. And this one, unfortunately, is not one that's going to stick with me. I haven't decided yet whether or not I'm going to to keep this, but I gave it a three stars. It was an entertaining ride, but it is ultimately forgettable to me. Then the next book I picked up was After I Do by Taylor Jenkins Reid. So this follows our main characters, Lauren and Ryan. They were college sweethearts. They met when they were 19. They've been married for several years and basically their marriage has reached a breaking point. They fight constantly. The traits that they used to find endearing are now obnoxious. They don't have sex. They basically have fallen out of love with each other. And in order to kind of save their marriage, they come up with a very unique solution and they make a decision to separate for one year. For one year, they are going to live apart. And the only rule is that they cannot contact each other, but they can see other people. They can have sex with other people. And this is basically to determine whether or not they really want to be together for the rest of their lives at this point, whether or not they can kind of fall back in love with each other. And at first, Lauren is absolutely devastated with Ryan. For the first several weeks, she just cannot get over his loss. But as time starts to go on, she starts to find out more about herself. She realizes that she can live a fulfilling life without Ryan. And she opens herself up to new experiences. And she even meets somebody and starts dating that person. She definitely goes on a journey of self-discovery. This is all about her healing process along with the support of her friends and family. So there are definitely a lot of great side characters in here that you get to know because they are a big part of Lauren's life and a part of her story. And the ultimate question is, will she decide to end her marriage or will she decide to go back to Ryan? I feel like this book is the epitome of what Taylor Jenkins Reid is good at and that is nuance. She takes a situation that is unusual, that is extremely complicated and that can have multiple sides and she presents all of those sides to you. And that's kind of what the side characters were for in here because 
everybody in her life has their own opinion on what marriage is and what she should do. And she's just struggling because she loves her husband so much. She misses him. But the further that she's away from him, the more she realizes that she can live without him. And it deeply dives into the emotions that accompany it all. She does such a great job. This is definitely an exploration of marriage. And it's also about how we are able to kind of choose our own happily ever afters and how those are going to look different for absolutely everybody. I thought that she did a fantastic job of exploring and showcasing the relationship between Lauren and Ryan and all of the ups and downs and the very realistic way that a marriage can deteriorate over time. And kind of along the same lines, I think that anybody who has been married or who has been in a long-term relationship is going to be able to really appreciate struggles that Lauren and Ryan were having in this book. And that's just one of the many reasons why I thought that this was so special and hard hitting. So I gave this a solid four stars. This was certainly very well done and I highly recommend. After finishing After I Do, I went ahead and picked up the next book in the Stephanie Plum novel because it was on my TBR and that is Sizzling 16. I don't really ever have much to say about these stories because they're all very formulaic and they kind of follow the same path. This follows our main character Stephanie Plum who is an accidental bounty hunter and she's not very good at her job. So this is all about the shenanigans she gets into as a bounty hunter but also it's equally about all of the quirky characters that are in her life. Like, there are definitely a lot of fantastic characters in these stories and as I always say they are fun, fast, entertaining. They are a great palate cleanser. Like for the most part they are always solid like three star reads or nothing that's ever going to be super memorable to me. Over time I'm not going to be able to pinpoint what happens in each story because they all kind of run together and they are extremely short. But like I said they are a good time and I will definitely continue in the series. I'm over halfway there at this point. I've made some good progress in it this year. So I gave this a three stars and it did exactly what I thought it would do. I also read The Seven Year Slip by Ashley Poston. So this is actually a speculative romance and it follows our main character Clementine and at the beginning of this book Clementine is deep in her grief. She lost her aunt whom she was very very close with. They used to travel around the world and six months ago her aunt actually took her own life and her aunt left her her apartment which is a very nice apartment in New York and Clementine really doesn't want to be there because it reminds her of her aunt but her aunt always told her that this was a magic apartment and Clementine soon experiences the magic for herself because this apartment actually has the ability of sending the resident of the apartment back in time but it's always seven years. It's never more and it's never less and so one day Clementine wakes up in the apartment and it's seven years in the past and it's being inhabited by a man I think his name is pronounced Ewan. Ewan if I remember correctly and Ewan is staying there for the summer because her aunt gave him the permission to. She's getting to know Ewan seven years in the past and of course a romance is kind of building between them but nothing can ever really happen because they can't leave the apartment together because as soon as you leave the apartment you're back in real time and the apartment only ever sends you back in time when it feels like you need to like when you're at a crossroads and so Clementine is never sure when she's actually going to see Eowon and she actually ends up connecting with him in the present day but he is a very different man. He is a very famous popular chef in New York. He's about to open his own restaurant but you're seeing them connect in the present as well as seven years in the past and it was just a cute sweet kind of love story. I really enjoyed my time while I was reading this. I thought it was a very interesting premise. It didn't knock my socks off though. It didn't blow me out of the water and a lot of the details of the story are already escaping me. I think I'm going to settle on like a 3.5 because I don't think that this was a meh read. I don't think that this was a forgettable read but I need my romances to pack a punch. Like I need them to be extremely emotional. I need them to make my chest ache like Abby Jimenez's books do. Even though there were definitely harder topics in here for the most part it didn't have the emotionally devastating aspects that I typically look for in my romances. Like I said I thought the premise of this was absolutely fascinating and for the most part well done. It just didn't quite blow me out of the water but I'm not mad that I read this at all. It just wasn't quite the oomph that I was looking for. And then the final book that I have to talk to you about today, Forever Home by Alicia Whistler. This was recently sent to me as part of the monthly Facebook gifting group that I am a part of and I wanted to go ahead and read it so it didn't get added to my TBR because I recently just did a video all about the books on my TBR and I did not want this one to get added. I was excited to go ahead and read this because I read the first book in this series, Rescue You. It was either in 2020 or early 2021. This was not a series that I had ever heard of before. I definitely never hear anybody talk about it but I really really loved the first book because it follows older characters. Like the characters are in their late 30s, early 40s. They're not in their 20s. They're not in their teens. It was far more relatable to me. I also loved a lot of the topics that were covered because one of the main things that connects these books are dogs. Like the main character in the first book, her sister Sunny actually owns a pit bull rescue. There were also a lot of other things that I love such as the focus on military veterans as well as CrossFit. CrossFit was also featured heavily in the first book and it was featured heavily in this one as well. So this book had a lot of the same things that I really loved. This follows our main character Delaney. She has recently retired from the Marine Corps and she has recently just opened up her own motorcycle shop. She wants to work on vintage motorcycles. That is her passion. That is what she connected with her father over and her father has recently passed away. So she is just kind of looking to make her dreams come true basically. And this is the relationship 
relationship that she begins to build with Detective Sean Callahan. Now you meet Sean Callahan in the very first book because he was actually in a casual relationship with Sunny, that sister that I mentioned that owns the dog rescue. And they end up connecting because they go to the same gym, but also they get connected because somebody stole a vintage bike that used to belong to Delaney's dad. And so Detective Sean Callahan is on the case. So you're seeing them grow closer as Detective Sean is on the case trying to find what happens to the bike. But also Sean has basically been enamored with Delaney since he first saw her at the gym and he is determined to get to know her and date her and basically be with her. Another cute thing was a pity in here by the name of Wyatt who used to be owned by the guys who owned the bike shop before Delaney purchased it and they were not very nice to him. They weren't abusive to him but they were very neglectful of him but he actually now resides at Pity Place, Sunny's Pity Rescue and that's not too far away from the motorcycle shop so he will actually escape the rescue and find his way back to the motorcycle shop and so Delaney kind of becomes his unofficial adopter because he's constantly going back and forth between the rescue and so it's also about the relationship between Delaney and this dog and working to heal the dog from his trauma as well and that was just absolutely wonderful so this certainly had a lot of the same aspects that I loved about Rescue You but for some reason this did not emotionally grab me like the first one I don't know if that first one maybe just found me at the right place at the right time I don't know if I was just really enamored by the difference in it because there were a lot of things that I connected to that I loved that I related to and I loved the fact that it was like older characters but something about the writing style in this was very disconnecting I didn't feel emotionally connected to the characters and so I only gave this one a three stars there is only one more book in this series to my knowledge I don't know if there's going to be any more but I think I will go ahead and read that third and final book and then call it a day with the series I do appreciate what Alicia Whistler is trying to do and like I said I really really appreciate and adore a lot of the things that are covered in the book it's just this one didn't grab me like the first one did so I'm going with a three star for this one all right everybody that is it those are all the books that I read for the first part of December it actually was six books not five I forgot to count the seven year slip in there as well please comment down below and let me know if you have read any of the books that I talked about in this video I would love to know your thoughts and opinions or if you have made it to the end of this video and you are not feeling chatty go ahead and leave me a dog emoji in honor of forever home absolutely love seeing your comments I love the engagement and it helps me in my channel so very much and as always if you like this video or if you just like me please be sure to give it a big thumbs up I am participating in book miss meaning from December 1st through the 25th you should be seeing one video upload from me a day and so if you don't want to miss any of that content please be sure to hit that subscribe button down below I absolutely love connecting with you in all of my videos or on any of my other social media platforms which you will always find leave linked down below along with any books that I may talk about in a video until next time guys